Welcome back to Python Scripting for GIS Applications. This is a class at the University of Alaska Fairbanks, and it is spring semester 2013. From last time, your assignment was to modify a script that does a definition query via a script tool. And what we want to do is, after we do the definition query, change the name of that new layer so it matches the definition query. So here we've got our definition query will be stored in this string query. So what we'll do is get this in layer object and make it from the input feature layer from the user. And then we'll add a new layer. So we'll add a new layer and it will be on the top. So it'll be the first layer in our data frame. And then we'll get that. It'll be index zero and that will be this new layer object. And then what we could do is assign our string query to that new layer object and then assign the name property as the string query to our new layer object. And then I created a little layer file that was just a red outline. Make that red outline a layer object and then use the update layer function to assign that red outline to our new layer. So basically what will happen is we'll do our definition query. It will become the layer on the top of the list of layers in our data frame. It will have a definition query that we assigned and the name of that layer will be the same as our definition query. And then the symbology will be a red outline symbology. So we'll test Okay, so we have our script tool and we'll make a definition query. And here I'll say, well, show me all the parcels where the land value is greater than a million dollars. So show me all the land parcels, land value greater than a million dollars. So it executes that script and now the symbology is all those parcels with a land value greater than a million dollars are in this red outline. And then the title is whatever our definition query was. So if we look at the properties for this layer, it does have that definition query land value is greater than a million dollars. And if we look at the table of this layer, it's two polygons and they both have a land value above a million dollars. Okay, in this session, I want to teach you how to use ArcPy mapping in the layout view. So if you go to the view menu, we've got actually two. One would be the data view, which is typically used when you're doing geoprocessing. And then the second would be the layout view, which is typically used when you're laying out to go to some sort of output like a PDF file or printing a map to a page on a piece of paper. Okay, so in the layout view, there's basic classes that ArcPy mapping understands. So for example, a legend element, text element, picture element, etc. And then there's basic functions that we can use. So for example, list layout elements or uh, data frame zoom to selected or data frame pan to selected. So here's an example. We've got our layout and we could say our layout elements equal ArcPy mapping list layout elements and then our map document object. And then we could print the length of the layout element. So in this example, there's five layout elements. So each map element would be something like a scale bar, a north arrow, a title, a picture element icon, things like that. So we could go for each object in our list of layout elements, print the object name and the object type. So the first layout element object is an icon, which is this little icon there, and the type is a picture element. And then the next in our list of layout elements is a single division scale bar, which is this object here, and the type is it's a map surround element. And then the next element is a north arrow, 
which is this object here, and it's also a map surround element. And then the text element is our title, and then our final element is our data frame. So the data frame is the entire data frame window, basically. Okay, one key thing to keep in mind is you cannot create layout elements in ArcPy mapping. But what you can do is manually make your layout elements and then just store them in a position that's not on the map page. So for example, here we'll make a north arrow and we'll store it at uh, negative 10 inches for the X and negative 10 inches for the Y. So it's actually off the sheet of paper. And we'll name this element north arrow, north, south, east, west. And then we'll make another north arrow. Once again, we'll store it off the page so it's at negative 10 inches, negative 10 inches. And we'll name this element north arrow north. And then what we could do is list these. So arcpy.mapping list layout elements, map surround element, and then we'll use a wild card, so north asterisk. And then for each object in that list, print the object dot name. So it's going to print the element name. So we've got north arrow north, north arrow north, south, east, west. And then as we're doing our arcpy dot mapping, we can move whatever north arrow we want onto our piece of paper. So in this case, I say my north, my narrow, North arrow is give me the second element from that list. So it will be this one. And then move it one inch over and one inch up on my page. And there it is, one inch over and one inch up on my page. So that's how you can work with um, having a variety of elements and then just choosing which one you want for your map layout. You would just store your variety of elements off the page using a negative XY coordinates. Okay, the other thing ArcPy mapping would be useful for is you've got some sort of uh, map layout and you want to just replace some text. So here's an example. We've got our map that we produced in 2010 and we want to do the same map but just change the date to 2011. So what you would do is just make your map document object and then get a list of all the layout elements that are text elements. And then we'll have our old text is 2010, our new text is 2011. So then we'll just loop through every text element. And if 2010 is in our text element dot text, then we assign 2011 as that text property. So basically that would just replace 2010 with our new text 2011. Okay, here's an example application. We've got Dolly Varden Lane is going to be paved. And what we need to do is send out a postcard to all the parcel owners that have a parcel adjacent to Dolly Varden Lane. So what we do is we set our page size to be 3 by 5 inches for our postcard. And then we'll set our selection color to be red. And then we'll just adjust our map layout the way we want it. So we're going to label our parcels in a layer. And the symbology for our parcels will be um, just a hollow symbology. And then we'll have our text properties set. So basically we set our layout the way we want. And then we'll just run a little Python script that will loop through every parcel on Dolly Varden Lane and then produce a map layout postcard for that parcel. Okay, so then here's our Python script. So we create our map document and then we get our data frame. And then from that data frame, we use a wildcard. So find the parcels layer and then return from that list just the first object in that list and that will become our parcels map layer. And then we'll have our title element. So that's this text element which is just the title we set up. And then we'll use a search cursor and loop through each polygon that we have to send a postcard to. So then we'll get from that polygon the mailing address and that becomes our title element dot text. And then we do a query 
So feature ID in, is equal to the polygon feature ID. And then we'll select layer by attribute, the parcels layer, make a new selection using this query, and then we'll zoom to that selected feature. So that will be our selected parcel polygon. And then we'll set our data frame scale to be a fixed scale, and then refresh the active view. And then we could loop through this, and it would basically display parcel by parcel, all the parcels that are in this layer. So the first time through the loop, this is the selected parcel and it's highlighted as a red outline color. The next time through the loop, this is the parcel that's selected. The third time through the loop, this is the parcel that's selected. And the fourth time through the loop, this is the parcel that's selected. And the title is changing each time through the loop because in our scripts, here we're changing the text property of our title element. It's going to be equal to whatever the selected parcel polygon is, and its field is a mailing address field. And if we want to, we could export to a PDF file just by using the arcpy.mapping export to PDF, and we would export in that loop whatever uh, our map document is showing us at that time to some output PDF. So we can make a variable output PDF is equal to this path plus the string of our feature ID plus the extension dot PDF. So the first time through the loop, it would create parcel 0.pdf, the next time through the loop it would create parcel 1.pdf, etc. All the way down to the last parcel in this example is parcel 10.pdf. And then we could merge those PDFs together in ArcPy. So here I've got a cover page. So what I'll do is first use the ArcPy mapping PDF create and we'll create this empty PDF called parcels.pdf. And then what we'll do is I've got a PDF for my cover page that I created like in Microsoft Word or some other Adobe Acrobat, whatever you want to create a cover page PDF. We'll use the this object dot append pages and then our cover page will become our first page in the PDF. And then we'll loop through from zero up to 11 and we'll append those 10 PDFs to this out PDF. So you remember here's our 10 PDFs that we created before, and now we're simply going to append those all into this out PDF. And then the last thing we want to do is with this out PDF object, we'll update properties. So we'll give it a title, and then we'll give it contact information, and then we save and close. So now we've got one PDF and it has uh, 11 pages. It has a cover page and then a page for each parcel that is along Dolly Varden Road. Okay, if you want to learn more about arcpy.mapping module, if you go to the Esri video website, here's a one hour and six minute video and it's entitled Python Map Automation Introduction to ArcPy.Mapping. So that's an excellent video. It's an introduction to ArcPy mapping for more information about it. Or if you go to video.esri.com, here's another video, Python Mapping Automation Beyond the Basics. And that is a runtime of almost an hour. So those are two videos together are about two hours of demonstration of this useful arcpy.mapping module. Okay, so I think you have enough material now to do the homework assignment for this week, which is at the NRM 638 website.